Hey everyone, thank you for joining Airspace tonight. So get your Bibles and something to write with and we'll be right back. Well, everyone, thanks for joining us tonight for Airspace. Pastor Debbie and I, we call you blessed. Yes, Amen. And so uh, tonight's uh, message is going to be entitled, what we're going to talk about is, what is this really all about? Mm. Amen. What is this really all about? So, uh, you know, really we want to uh, address some things that we believe that will help the body of Christ help you as a believer to be prepared for what is actually going on in the earth today. So, you know, the election, yeah. that its outcome, and what is going <laughs> on in our nation and world is what we want to talk about tonight. And so uh, get prepared because in a few moments we're going to go through some scriptures. I believe that some things that are going to be said uh, that you may want to write down because I believe that it will help you and help us as we move forward. So one of the things I want us to really to do it in answering the question, what, uh, you know, what is really go all this about? What, in other words, what is really going on in not only the United States, but in the world, but specifically because we live in the United States of America, we should be concerned about the America, yet we should be concerned about the world as, as well. So what we have to do, and one of the things I want us to do tonight is to get through what I call the fog, the smoke screens and some things that are, are really real. You know, fog and smoke screens are really real, but what they do is they hide a thing so you can't see the things that are really around you. Right. And, uh, you know, that's how the devil really operates. That's how he works. He works mm -hmm. through smoke screens and he, he brings things that are, are real, but the, the real things that are dangerous go unseen. Mm -hmm. And so that we have an unseen battle that we are uh, fighting. Mm -hmm. And it, the scripture lets us know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers there in Ephesians chapter six. It tells us that. Yeah, verse 12. And so the it, right verse 12. So the really the 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 smoke screen and the fog that I'm talking about is the pandemic, uh, the, what's happened it, this past year uh, uh, with the pandemic, the economy, uh, racism hatred, and all the diversions. Now, don't get me wrong. Every one of those are real, and I make no light about that. They're all real, and they're very important. They have affected all of our lives. They're real. But all those things that I just mentioned are all part of a plan, okay? And so um, this is where it's all headed and what it's really all about, everything, okay? And here's what it is. It is to prevent the second coming of Christ. That's what it is. Now, I can tell you uh, that you already know that that's going to happen. The second coming is going to happen just like the first coming. You know, when Jesus came the first time, there was, there was all kind of things to prevent uh, his first coming. Actually, uh, uh, 2,000 uh, years of history or uh, uh, many years of history, we can see that of uh, things that were done to prevent his coming, his first coming. We must see that even again uh, today, Christ has come, but he's going to come again. And the things that we're actually seeing that's happening in this world are coming to prevent his second coming. And what this is really all about is about who will rule the world. Okay. So in other words, this is about a, a world ruler. Mm -hmm. And even though it's about a natural person, it has a real spiritual cause because this is about a spiritual battle. Everything that we see happening in the natural, there's a spiritual battle going on and it's all really about that. So the cloud of tyranny over this country and over the earth that right now is, um, it's, it is evident, right? And uh, it is to steal our freedom and to force our submission to a small group of world leaders that are going to be raised up who then will be led by the Antichrist. This is, this is what this is really about. I know we're not there yet, no. but this has to, these steps 
or what's trying to be taken. And we have to understand this. And so what, what we're seeing going on is really even in our country and especially in our country right now, because we're facing this. The, much of the world has already been facing this, but now we're facing it. And it's really about a global reset. And that global reset, listen to me, has been worked on for a long time. Okay. This global reset uh, is going to be a religious reset, a, a monetary reset, and actually a citizen reset. In other words, what it's trying to happen is that we become global citizens. And it's all about, when I say a global citizen, it's going to be ways that we're all going to be global citizens. We'll all be controlled, tracked, and told what we can and cannot do. And if you don't can't see that, then hopefully the things that we're talking about today will open your spiritual eyes to be able to see that. You know, sometimes we're so focused on America that we fail to realize that much of the, of the world that is today are already experiencing the very things through uh, communism, socialism, and all those very uh, yeah. things that, that totally is the abolition of every freedom that you could possibly have. Not just the abolition of your private property, but as Karl Marx said himself, as you've heard me say before, it's the abolition of also all religions of morality and is the, and of the family unit as we now know it. And so this is about a global reset and it's about us all becoming global citizens and all about controlling our soul and ensuring every soul ultimately goes to hell because this plan is of Satan. And so, love, I, you know, last week, last Wednesday, uh, we did two special things here at the church. We had a, a time of prayer that, that was a, a, a quite a large group of people came and prayed for our nation. Yeah. And uh, it was, either. and we, we, and we should not stop. That's right. We need to continue to pray. That's and right. we gathered because we all know that that was the day that the electoral college was going to uh, determine uh, the vote and possibly uh, the, the outcome of the election. And as important as the election is, it's important not just because of a party or a person, it's important because of our national freedom and as a believer, our religious freedom. Right. It, it, it's important because it's, it, it's important because will our constitution remain the same or will it try to be changed or overthrown, our whole government overthrown? And so what we have to understand, we came together to pray about that, okay? And then we did a special airspace, okay? Uh, last, last week, week about that to expose more of the darkness and the corruption that's going on in, in the world today, uh, particular, uh, in our government. Okay. And so, uh, I had an interesting, I want to use this question because I had a, a outstanding question that was text me by a, a beloved brother in Christ. And, uh, that afternoon, last Wednesday afternoon, and I thought it was such a good question that I would use that tonight in, in our, in what we're talking about, because I believe that this is something that we all need to know the answer of it. And this person's question was, they text me and said, can the government of the U.S. derail God's plan for his people? I would say that again. Can the government of the U.S. derail God's plan for his people? That should be a question all of us are asking. And this is why we entitled last week, Why the Fight? I'm not talking about a fist fight or something like that. I'm talking about why we're fighting for our freedom. Right. Amen. Praise God. Well, the answer to that question, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, read basically what I said to that uh, person in, uh, the, uh, the text message verbatim. And then they text me back and said, just, hey, thanks for the clarity on this. So their question was, can the government of the U.S. De of the U.S. derail God's plan for his people? And my answer was yes. That was true for Israel and even with the United States of America in past history. We have plenty of scriptural evidence that a, a government, this is why it was important, who led the nation, Israel, who led, whether it had a good king or evil king, because it can, depending upon who's leading it, derail God's plan 
uh, for his people. That was true for Israel, and we could even see that be true for the United States in past history. However, it doesn't have to be if its leaders and the people take the right action, which include doing things God's way and trusting Him. And this is why we must pray. This is why Second Chronicles 7.14 gives us the, the remedy here. And we're going to quote that. It says, it tells us what to do. It, it gives us the reversal of what a man's plan would try to bring and man that, that has done things his way or some other way instead of God's way. It says that God said, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Let's talk about believers turning from their wicked ways. That's right. Then God would hear from heaven and forgive our sin and heal our land. So what we have to do is realize that even though that God is for us, are we for him? We may say we are, but if we don't stand for God, the God-given principles and God's word, then we really are against God. We set, we set ourselves against God. If we love the world more than we love the world, James says we set ourselves as an enemy of God. And he's not talking to the world there. He's talking to the church. So we must understand this. I said, God said, if you love the world more than you love the word, you then go. you're an enemy of God. Thank you. I probably was talking so fast. I yeah, said something different. Okay, so you have to you have to love the word more than more than the world. That's okay, right. because if we don't, then we become enemies of God. That's right. what James says, and so this can sure can affect or delay God's plan, but it doesn't have to if right. God's people does what is right. Man's government can delay the plan of God for a nation because God will give the nation what it wants. But more importantly, this is why the, the people of God must stand in the gap. And, and, and if pray. the people and pray and do what is right, because see, remember God told through the prophet Samuel told Israel, I don't want you to have a king, but you know, God gave Israel a king because the nation of Israel wanted a king. You know why? Because they want it to be like the world. They said, we want to be like the world. We, we want a king like to rule over us. In other words, God is saying, what you really want is someone ruling over you other than me. And I will give you, even though I don't want to do that, because you you desire that as my people, and you want that, I'm going to warn you against it, because, but because you're set for it, I will give you what you want. And so I want us to understand we can get what we want, but we don't, we might not like what we get. This is why every believer must side in with God in the will of God. It's not about, this election is not about a party and not about a personality. It's really about the plan and purpose and the principles of God. And if we make it something else than that, then we are in error. Okay. So what, what we really find this is all about. So it, the answer is yes to that question, but it doesn't have to be. We have to do, the, God, the people of God has to do what is right. It's not, it's not hanging in the balance of what the world will do. It's hanging in the balance of what the Christian will take action and do. And so really what all this is about is stopping get God's plan. And this is about what's going on today is about stopping God's plan. And this is, includes stopping the church. The church is God's will, His voice, and His agent for world evangelism. And this is really what it's all about. It's about stopping this. This is what it's about. And, you know, the church is viewed... Oh, here's what we need to understand. When Jesus came the first time, just like right now before His second coming, mm -hmm. the church was then and is now viewed as dangerous. Because, here's why. Because it has another king. Mm -hmm. His name is Jesus. That's right. Amen. That's, That's right. why the church then was viewed as dangerous and why the church now is viewed as dangerous. You know, here's the interesting thing. You said, well, it ha talk about that a minute, uh, Pastor Chris. Thank you for asking me that. You know, the word church is the Greek word ekklesia. This is an interesting word. When we define it uh, on a natural term or uh, even on a spiritual term. It basically means a called out ones. It means chosen ones. It means yeah. called out to listen 
to and act for God. So in other words, the church, a one word definition, this is why the word church actually means an assembly. So we come together, the people of God come together to hear from God and to get marching orders and to act for God. But this is why this was so, this is why the church on the first century was uh, deemed so dangerous, actually treasonous, because this word church that the ecclesia was a Greek word that was a, was used secular, uh, in the secular uh, world at that time, um, used uh, as a word that for a government. The word ecclesia was the, in the, in the world of that day, even in, in Rome, this word was used, but it was used for a government. It was a, it used for a government that had legislative authority and who had power to govern, make laws, and to determine wars. Amen. All those things. So really, every time when the when Jesus said, "I will build my church, and the gates of hell will prevail against it," will He said, "I'm gi- will not prevail against it." Thank you. What He's actually saying is, "I'm giving my authority to the church." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. And Amen. this is why the, it could be deemed as as not only threatening but actually treasonous against Rome, because once again, this was a word that that Rome used for government, uh, for legislative authority who had power to govern, make laws, and to determine wars. And it was an elite group of people in Rome that was chosen to do this. Now, now the church or the people of God is raising up and said, we're another government. That's what they're saying. Wow. That's what, that's what they're hearing. Right, and, but right. here's where the real issue was. They, 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 they knew they had another king and that's where the problem is. They had another king and his name is Jesus. Right. And so this is why even today, to make no bones about it, that Jesus and the church is still a threat and a real issue. This is what this is really all about. Don't get caught up in all the other smoke screens and all the things that uh, that block have you. All these other things are pop-ups to keep us from seeing what is really the issue and what's really going on. So Satan really knows that the governments of man, including his with the Antichrist, will be overthrown by the government of God. And that's the problem. This is what this is really about because all the governments of man will one day be overthrown and ruled by the government of God. And uh, this is what this is really about. Who will actually uh, rule the world? Praise God. And so uh, as we talk about these things uh, tonight, we must understand. I forgot one of my, my things here. It, this is all about stopping Jesus, the church. And ultimately, the kingdom of God. Because once again, the the kingdom of God is going to replace all the kingdoms of man. And Satan knows this. And this is what Satan is working to stop. And so he must build his kingdom. And he has a plan too. It's called, there's going to be a world, world, world ruler that opposes the Christ, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. His name is the Antichrist. And so let's talk about this for a moment. Let's look at a few scripture verses that prove that the, the kingdoms, all the kingdoms of man are going to be replaced by the kingdom of God and the rule of God. And Isaiah chapter nine, uh, let's turn there in verse six and seven. It says this, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now we read this all the time at Christmas time, so most of us are familiar with this. Verse 7 says, In the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David, upon the and upon his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with ju- judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, and the zeal of the Lord of the host will perform this. Mm-hmm. Amen. So we can clearly <laughs> see this. Possibly, uh, this is illustrated better in no other places than the book of Daniel. Uh, 
And we don't have time tonight to go to an extensive study of that, but I would like you for to turn to the book of Daniel tonight. And we're going to look at two portions of scripture here that illustrate this. We could spend much more time here, but we won't. In Daniel, the second chapter and verse 44 and verse 45, in prefacing before we read this, we're going to see the Babylonian king at that time, King Nebuchadnezzar, the children of Israel had disobeyed God. They were in exile. A young um, uh, uh, is, uh, Jewish exile, Daniel, who we know becomes a great prophet. Amen. And um, there in Babylonian captivity, and Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar has this dream. And it so troubles him, the, the, the king of Babylon has this dream uh, that it so troubles him. He tries to get all his astrologers and all his magicians to interpret this or they die, but none of them could. And so they call Daniel, long story short, and Daniel interprets this dream. And actually he interprets it and, and God shows him the future. He shows all four world empires of, of, uh, from that time forward. Okay. So at that time, the Babylonian empire was, was it. Okay. But we know that he gives them four different empires, the Babylonian empire, the Medes and Persian empire, the, the, the empire of Greece. And then lastly, the Roman empire. Amen. That was active when Jesus came. Okay. So here's what verse 44 and verse 45 says. And in the days of these kings, now he fast forward to the very end of time. In other words, if we would say the book of Revelation and the end of end, he fast forwards to this and he tells them in the end of these, uh, uh, in the de in these days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Verse 45, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it break in pieces, the iron, the brass, the clay and the silver and the gold. That's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's just who that's talking about. And the great God hath made known unto the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation is sure. Amen. And so this tells us about a time when God will raise up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he will destroy every world empire, amen, and overcome every world empire that has tried to uh, stop him and stop his people, okay? And so uh, Daniel chapter 7 gives us another uh, portion of Scripture that speaks of this same thing again in verse 13 and 14, and then we'll read verse 18 finally. And with as much more we could read here, but these verses are so powerful. And I saw in, in, in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given to him, this is talking about Jesus, there was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom th that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. This is what this is all about. And his dominion and 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 his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Amen. Wow. Amen. Pretty powerful. And then lastly, we want to look, this confirms this again in the book of Revelation. We see in the book of Revelation in chapter 11, we're going to read uh, there when we get to verse number 15. So we we'll give you a few moments to get there. Amen. And then now we read verse 15 in the book of uh, verse 15. Revelation 11, the seventh angel sounded and there was great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and we shall reign and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. And so what is this all about? Well, this is fast forwarding, amen, uh, to the climax of the ages where we're living at today 
And now as the scripture teaches us, this final kingdom, okay, of the four that are world rulers, okay, that are ruled by just a natural man. The last one was Rome, okay. We see from the scripture that it, both in Daniel and the book of Revelation, that in the last of the last days, there will be a another rule, uh, world ruler that comes out of the revived Roman Empire. Okay, so Rome was the last world empire and it will be revived. Okay, that this is where the European Union is coming out that this world ruler, the Antichrist will come out of that. Okay, out of, out of that system. Okay, he will he will give power to other uh, world rulers who will then and give power back to him to rule the world. And of course, this is what this is all about. But we know that he will set up a kingdom to try to, uh, to, to stand against Christ. But God laughs in heaven and Christ will return and destroy all the enemies of God with his breath. Amen. With the very word of his mouth. Amen. And so what we have to do is realize this is what it's all about. This is where it's all heading and we don't have to fear. We just need to know the truth. This is why all the confusion, this is why all the, the, the things is, it's not just about what you see with the pandemic. It's not just what you see about, uh, uh, you know, the economy, all those things playing a part of what it's headed to for world control and domination because there's going to be chaos and all these other kind of things and there's going to be a, a man of peace that comes. This is going to happen after the rapture of the church. A man of peace is going to come, offer solutions, world solutions for everyone and he will be embraced. His name, he he will be the Antichrist. And so, you know, you know what what are we going to do? What should we do? Well, I'm going to quote what Dr. Mark Barclay, who has been to our church a number of times, he said in a uh, interview that we uh, uh, heard with him uh, on this past Saturday night. He said this. He said, the battle is on. Beware of the, of the soon coming storm. If we stand as one. Now, he talks to the church. If we stand as one, O-N-E, this year will be one, W-O-N. If we stand as one, this year will be one. Amen. And so in other words, what that means is the church cannot be divided. Divided. The church needs to be a united voice understanding what is really going on, be a voice for God and do things God's way. And so when, when we look at this, here's what's going to happen. Now listen to me, we're about to close. Christians will more and more feel the time of the Lord's coming for the church and the rapture is near as sinners will feel the end of the world is coming upon them. Wow. Wow. So the closer we get to the climax of the end of the ages, we're going to feel more and more like the Lord is coming for us. Amen. But you know what? The world is going to feel like the end is coming upon them. Mm -hmm. And this is what, yeah. see, Satan always uses fear to trap people. And he'll use yeah. fear to trap the church as well. This is why he wants to shut the church down, the yeah. church to be closed, to be a, a, not a voice and a force for him. Because I've had person after person say, oh my God, I'm so glad that the church is open and that we can come to church because, uh, you know, all this isolation, all these other things, we sit and we think about the wrong things. We believe the wrong things. We allow fear to trap us. And hold us in bondage. And that's what it's trying to do. But faith, faith is exercised to overcome fear. That's and right. we have to have faith to save people. And so what do we do? Well, we're, we got to be busy about preaching the gospel. We got to be busy about winning the lost. We got to be busy about equipping and strengthening the saints and, and empowering them to do what God has called all of us to do. And that's first of all, to win the lost at all costs. And that's what we have to do. Then, you know, that's what the early church did. That when, that when great persecution came upon the early church, it said, we can give you scripture after scripture that they, they were not confined. They spread out and they scattered preached the abroad. gospel. They scattered abroad as Acts chapter eight says, and they preach the gospel everywhere. Yeah, even Amen. More even so more bolder, bolder because they yeah. ask for that boldness. So we're gonna we're gonna pray about that boldness tonight. And and it was so said of them, they did the will of God. It said of them, they were so threatening 
that they turn the world upside down. And that's exactly what Satan is afraid about, about the church in America. And, 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 and about, this is what this is really about. And so yeah. remember fear will bind us and keep us going in the wrong direction, saying the wrong things, thinking the wrong things, taking the wrong action. But faith will cause us to move forward. Faith will cause us to advance. Faith will put down fear, will rebuke the devil, will exercise his authority and get out and win the lost and help other people to be strengthened in that faith in God. And we too will be called people that will turn the world upside down, really turning it the way it's supposed to be. And so tonight, love, uh, I thought in closing tonight, we would pray for our people unless you have some other words that you want to speak, something coming to you that you want to speak, that we want to, you know, pray for boldness for our people. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this is the time, you know, as a church, as a believer, that we want to chase and run after God with full fervency. Yes, that's that so good. Jesus Christ becomes your one and only priority. That's so good. Yeah. And we have these self-disciplines in our lives that's going to help us to stay strong and focused and uh, fulfill the assignments mm -hmm. and tasks God-given assignments yeah. and tasks before Jesus comes and gets us. So maybe a couple of those disciplines, what would they be, love? Well, one would be spending time with God in the Word. Yeah. In His Word. Amen. Yeah, spending time with Him. I know prayer would be one. That's one prayer. of your favorite. Yes. Amen. Prayer would yeah. be. How about your local church? How Amen. about coming to church? Yeah. Self-discipline. Amen. That's Reading right. good books that will help feed your faith. Not just everything out there, but great things. Yeah. Ask yourself, what does your pastor recommend? What are some of the things that pastor... I'm, matter of fact, yeah. on Sunday mornings, just studying the Bible, uh, the increased realities. If we do that In this year... Increased realities. If you will go back and listen to those five steps of mm -hmm. how to study the Bible and study those those in Christ's realities, it will right. strengthen it. Possibly one of the greatest ways, there's many ways to study the Bible. Possibly that's one of the greatest ways to grow you spiritually. That's Amen. Right. Praise God. That's very true. That's what Be it works for us. That's, it does because it, re it tells you who you are, what you have and what you can do. And we need that. Yeah. And you know, even though we're talking about that, we, 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 we're saying that the reason we do messages like this, because this is where we live at in, in every day, that's even right. in the midst of knowing who we are, what we have and what we can do, we have to know how to live in a world that's gone crazy and what we're confronting and why in the world is what's going on going on. Well, we told you. And so uh, that's not the first time you've heard it. We just may be saying it in a little different way or just going deeper with it or just saying it again. But it's all uh, what God would say. And he wants us to be victorious. He wants us to be bold. So let us pray for you tonight. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Pastor Deb and I, we mix our faith uh, for the people of God. We mix our faith uh, for those that are listening tonight. And we pray uh, that they will be bold. We pray that a quickening uh, will come to them. A peace would come to them through the truth that uh, we talked about in this. That fear will re be replaced with faith and that they will be learn to be strong in you and the power of your might. That they would silence in with you and hear from you like like they've never heard before and even deepening their relationship as they deepen their their disciplines but Lord we thank you we pray as the early church did as well Lord now grant unto us your servants to speak your word with all boldness yes. while you stretch forth your hand for for uh, to heal and that signs and wonders will be done in the mighty name of Jesus our king our lord our savior and the Savior of the world, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, Pastor Deb and I call you blessed. We love you. And remember, you may be listening tonight and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You know what? The scripture says in Romans 10, 13, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right there, you can say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. Jesus, I turn from my way and I receive you. Come into my heart. Forgive me, my, forgive me of my sins. And be my Lord. If you pray that prayer, he will save you, will forgive you, and make you his child. And you don't have to fear anymore where you spend eternity. You can live and learn to walk with him. Hey, we call you blessed. Thank you tonight for joining yes. our space. We love you.